Hello everyone. Welcome back to cell biology class. We are moving to chapter 12 if you are using the world of the cell textbook with me. And in this chapter we are talking about protein sorting, how proteins are made and how they are moved to the various locations where they need to be. We are mainly going to talk about protein movement within the endomembrane system. When we talk about the endomembrane system, we are talking about the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi complex, endosomes, lysosomes, and the plasma membrane. In the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi complex, these two organelles are going to be doing protein synthesis, processing those proteins, and sorting those proteins. Endosomes are going to be carrying and sorting materials that's brought into the cell. Lysosomes are going to be digesting ingested material. So if a food source was brought in, it's going to be ingested, digested by the lysosomes. They're also going to break down unneeded cellular components. First, the endoplasmic reticulum is a continuous network of flattened sacs, tubules, and vesicles. Here, if you look in this picture, it is this lighter blue image. So these flattened sacs, and these tubules here. And they just uh, run throughout the cytoplasm of the cell. The membrane sacs are called the ER cisternae or cisterna, and the space inside of them is called the lumen. The word lumen we've used before typically refers to the interior part of something. Within the endoplasmic reticulum, or the ER, are different enzymes that are used to biosynthesize proteins or make those proteins that are going to be involved in the plasma membrane function or that are going to be involved in organelles of the endomembrane system or that are going to be exported from the cell. The endoplasmic reticulum is also involved in synthesizing lipids. There's two kind of different kinds of endoplasmic reticulum. As you can tell, there's these flattened parts with the bumps on them and these more tubular parts that don't have bumps on them. The parts with the bumps are rough, so they're called the rough ER. And these little bumps on them are ribosomes. They are making proteins. Within the rough ER, there's a subdomain called the transitional elements, or the TEs. And they're going to be involved in forming transition vesicles. Vesicles are what your cell uses to move things between various components. So within the ER, those transition vesicles are going to take lipids and proteins here from the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi. The smooth ER doesn't have ribosomes. Instead, it's going to help do other things in the cell besides protein synthesis. It can be involved in pro processing and storing non-proteins, maybe ions, maybe toxins, maybe lipids. The rough ER, these membranes form large flattened sheets while the smooth ER forms more tubular structures. However, within the rough ER, those, tubu those transitional elements are going to be more resemblance of with the smooth ER. The luminal spaces of the rough ER and the smooth ER are continuous. Kind of hard to see in this picture, but they're all connected to each other. And both types of the endoplasmic reticulum are present in most eukaryotic cells. Although in different types of cells, there will be variation in the relative amounts of these membranes. Cells that are involved in synthesizing secretory proteins are going to have much more prominent rough ER networks. And cells that are producing steroid hormones are going to have more extensive smooth ER networks. So within the rough ER, we are doing those initial steps of making the proteins and adding glycoproteins or adding carbohydrates to make glycoproteins. We're going to take those polypeptides that we've created and fold them into hopefully a functional three-dimensional shape. We're going to recognize and remove any proteins that are misfolded and any proteins that are multimeric or have a quaternary structure of more than one polypeptide are going to be assembled. If there are proteins that are folded incorrectly, um, or that are modified or assembled for export 
to be exported for degradation, they will be taken um, to cytosolic proteasomes for degradation. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum has some different functions than what the REF ER has. It's going to be involved in drug detoxification, carbohydrate metabolism, storing calcium, and biosynthesizing steroids. So it's mainly involved in processing and storing molecules that are not proteins, non-protein molecules within the cells. Within the, the smooth ER, being able to detoxify drugs often involves hydroxylation or adding a hydroxy and OH group onto a molecule. By adding that hydroxyl group, um, especially if you're adding that to a hydrophobic drug, it makes it much more soluble in water because that is a polar side chain. And by making them more soluble, it's more easy for that molecule to dissolve into the urine and be excreted from the body. The molecule that will actually catalyze that hydroxylation are monooxygenases, which are a member of the cytochrome P450 families. Different people can have P cytochrome P450 genes, which means they'll have slightly different cytochrome P450 molecules, which means they will slightly differ in how they are hydroxylating those toxins. That means that there can be differences in how active a certain medication is or side, side effects of a certain medication based on having different cytochrome P450 genes. Um, this is a field of study called pharmacogenetics, um, which researches things like how can differences in genes like the P450 lead to differential responses to drugs and medications. Um, this is kind of a new exciting emerging field of study um, learning how different genes are related to differences in success or non-success of drugs um, and this may be a field that you're interested in studying we're not going to talk about it any more than that within this video um, but if you'd like to come talk to me after class or send me an email i'm certainly happy to talk to you about that field okay within the smooth er and liver cells the, this is also going to be involved in breakdown stored glycogen. So when the cell needs a release of glycogen to raise the blood pressure, to raise the blood sugar, um, it will start releasing that sugar from the glycogen. Within the smooth ER is an enzyme called glucose 6 phosphatase. And that enzyme is going to help break down the glycogen by phosphorylating it. So now you'll have glucose 6 phosphate. And then that glucose 6-phosphatase is going to take that glucose 6-phosphate to make glucose. And now that glucose can be released into the blood to raise your blood sugar level. The smooth ER is also involved in calcium storage. Um, very prominently in muscle cells is an organelle called the smooth sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the sarcoplasmic reticulum is an example of smooth ER that is really important in storing that calcium in, in the muscle cells. And within the ER lumen, there's also high concentrations of calcium binding protein, so you can hold on to that calcium. And they will be pumped into the endoplasmic reticulum by ATP dependent calcium ATPases, so that you're accumulating that calcium in the, the lumen of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And then they'll be released when they're needed to be used for muscle contraction. In some cells, the smooth ER is also involved in synthesizing cholesterol and other steroid hormones. So you'll find a lot of smooth ER in cells that are actually synthesizing steroid hormones. The smooth ER is also associated with plastids in some plants and might be involved in hormone synthesis of plants. Another function of the ER is biosynthesizing membranes, including the membranes that will end up traveling to and becoming part of the plasma membrane. So in almost all eukaryotic cells, with few exceptions, the endoplasmic reticulum is the main source of membrane lipids. Fatty acids that are meant for membrane phospholipids will be synthesized in the cytoplasm, 
and then they'll be incorporated into the endoplasmic reticulum, the membrane on the cytosolic side. Then those flippases, an enzyme we've talked about before, will um, transfer those fatty acids to the luminal side of the bilayer. What kind of phospholipid molecules are transferred across the membrane? Will depend on which kind of translocator, which flippase is present. So you can end up with membrane asymmetry where you have different phospholipid types on either side of the membrane. The, difference, the differences in the composition of the cytosolic and the luminal sides of the monolayer of that membrane are going to be established in the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, and that'll be transferred to other cell membranes. After the endoplasmic reticulum, it rarely moves from either side of the membrane. Phospholipids can move from the endoplasmic reticulum to the mitochondria, chloroplasts, or peroxisomes, but that gets a little more problematic. And so phospholipid exchange proteins or phospholipid transfer proteins are often going to be used to convey those specific phospholipids to those organelles. Here, let's start by looking at this table showing us different membrane components. So membranes are made by um, carbohydrates a little bit. Their main weight comes from proteins and some lipids. And within those lipids, we have phosphatidylcholine, the main membrane lipid, phosphatidylethanolamine, phosphatidylserine, cholesterol, and sphingomyelin. There's trace amounts of glycolipids, and there's also other lipids. Okay, so when we come back, we're going to start talking about the Golgi apparatus and what's going on with our protein synthesis there. See you later. Bye.